Yeah, yeah. Hi. Um, yeah, I'll probably introduce uh, myself with my story. Um, the way I was going to do this, if it's OK, was I was going to kind of run through my journey through technology. Then I was going to run through my journey as far as art's concerned. And then I was going to talk a little bit about how the two uh, combine in what I'm doing now. Um, so, um, yeah, so a good good to meet everybody. And uh, I uh, hope, hope you enjoy the talk. My, my talk's not going to have any slides or any pictures, so that's maybe slightly unusual for art, but um, uh, I, I hope it uh, goes well. OK, so um, yeah, uh, so I'll start by uh, talking a little bit about uh, how I got involved in uh, deep technology, which is where I am at the moment. Um, I actually left school at uh, 17 without any any qualifications and um, I sort of trucked up into London looking for uh, for uh, fame and fortune. Um, and I ended up in a building uh, uh, which was four to five Bonhill Street, uh, which are those of you that are from London will recognize actually um, is actually where Google campus is uh, the, these days. And so I was there 30 years before it became Google campus, uh, which might have been a sign for where I was uh, heading in the future. Um, Anyway, I, I've spent most of my um, career in, in different forms of technology. And uh, I had um, my, my big break, really, quite early on in, in my career. I was about uh, 25 at the time. And um, I, was, I sold the, the world's first large liquid crystal display uh, board at, uh, at, a, at a railway station in London called Paddington. Um, and I was able to build a career um, for the next uh, 10 years or so. Um, on selling this particular type of technology that was very new at the time and um, really gave me my big break. Um, then um, I, uh, because I was spending so much time uh, visiting airports and railway stations, um, I, I learned a lot about that domain and uh, I was able to uh, transition to being an expert, a management consultant. So I joined a large, uh, a, a large organization called Capgemini. Um, as a management consultant, and um, I was, I, I started to get involved in much bigger projects, and uh, it, it, this is really where I, I, I got what I, I call the startup bug, because we did a big joint venture between a Cap Gemini, sorry, Cap Gemini and Vodafone around the last uh, dot com bubble. And um, it was uh, it was very exciting times. And it really, if you imagine around about the year 2000, we were looking at the first kind of uh, uh, iteration of mobile apps and, and, and uh, the and things like that. And this really sparked an interest in the whole sort of startup world. And at around about that point, I dropped out of um, uh, corporate life and uh, got involved in the startup world. And I created a startup platform that was called Dreamstake. Um, and this was a platform, so this was a, uh, a predecessor of um, platforms such as uh, Cedars and Crowdcube, which later became crowdfunding platform. Uh, we had lots of startups join the platform and really it was all about helping uh, startups in London to accelerate themselves and also most of them were consumer internet so we had it really across a section of almost everything really everything from fintech to fashion tech um, med tech health tech you know ed tech uh, all different types of startups um, joined the platform and we ran a lot of events out of Google campus and uh, we had an academy and all sorts of things like that. Um, I think it was around about this sort of the, the, the last part of that period when I first discovered uh, blockchain. I'll come back, back to blockchain, but we did run probably one of the first um, events around blockchain around about 10 years ago in London. So uh, it was a long, long time ago. Um, now, about five years ago, I sensed that there was a kind of sea change um, happening around uh, moving towards um, what I was calling deep tech at the moment. And the way I kind of defined deep tech was really machine learning, quantum computing, distributed ledger, um, AR, VR, that kind of thing. And um, what I sensed was it wasn't, wasn't exactly happening where um, a lot of the London tech startup scene happens in Shoreditch, but it was happening um, more around uh, King's Cross. Now, King, King's Cross is a really interesting environment for deep tech because you've got Google DeepMind, 
you've got the Turing Institute, you've got the uh, the Crick Institute, you've got a, a, a whole group of big uh, institutes. So really uh, around there, and I don't know how many of you guys are from London, but around there, you've really got a global world class ecosystem for startups forming for in the very early stages, because most of the, the, the names I mentioned are definitely not startups. Um, so you've got the, the you've got the bare bones of an ecosystem, but not necessarily the, the, the flow of the startups coming through there. And so I, I, I really kind of um, de decided to take on the challenge of, uh, of growing this ecosystem. Um, and the mechanism that I used for doing this was to create an accelerator. So I, I um, designed an accelerator for the uh, Crick Institute, uh, which was a health tech, um, AI, and, uh, sorry, AI health tech uh, accelerator. Um, and that was about four years ago that it started. We've, we've now run four cohorts of that. Uh, each year we take 10 startups uh, in AI health and we accelerate them towards uh, Series A. And it's been very, very successful. We've done this four, four cohorts. Um, a lot of startups coming through that program have been funded uh, to, uh, to, to multi-million uh, levels and some of them have even exited um, as well. Now, from that experience, I, I decided to uh, move uh, towards, uh, to run some other accelerators and to grow some other ecosystems. So since then I've been running um, AI drug discovery uh, for St Stevenage Bioscience Catalyst. Um, so there we take on 15 startups uh, per year uh, in, um, in, in AI machine learning, but around specifically drug discovery rather than the broader uh, health of the other um, of the other accelerator. And then finally, and probably the most esoteric of them all at the moment is that I'm, uh, I've been running a pilot quantum computing accelerator with UCL um, and an organization called Capital Enterprises. Um, and so, so, you, so, so basically, I, what I really tend to do is I try to grow ecosystems, tech, tech ecosystems, um, by running accelerator programs. And I will come to blockchain and crypto uh, in a few moments because that's kind of my next, um, my, my next uh, journey. But I think before I, I do that, um, I'll just go back now through the same kind of story, but a little bit shorter. You'll be pleased to hear around um, my journey around art. Um, so I, I guess I, I, I was never sort of classically trained in art. I, I got interested uh, in my late teens and um, I've always I've always painted a bit. It's been mainly painting, mainly um, mainly acrylic on on canvas. Um, and then for, throughout my life, I've really been, um, I, I guess, progressing through the different styles of the of the 20th century. So, um, you know, originally it was kind of impressionism, then it was kind of German expressionism and uh, and then it moved on to things like um, uh, abstract expressionism and uh, other styles. So I kind of um, I kind of learned the various styles, but um, it was actually during um, lockdown that uh, I started to paint at home um, whilst at the same time, you know, taking Zoom meetings and things like that. Um, and I realized that um, I could, um, you know, I could sell my art. Um, and uh, by this time I was doing really pretty sort of vibrant um, abstract um, uh, paintings. Um, in fact, you can see my work on, I'll put it in the chat later on, but you, you can see my work on uh, at Paul M Dowling on Instagram. So if anybody wants to be looking at the art while we, while we talk. Um, so I moved towards um, abstract expressionism in, in fluorescent uh, color colors and, and the like, um, took on a, a small uh, studio, um, which would also acts as a, um, a, a, as a showroom as well um, in Hackney Wick, which is actually an, um, an artist area of, of London. Um, and uh, he started to sell my paintings whilst doing the technology work uh, as well. Um, and, um, and, and, and then I started to, to you know, to explore uh, digital art um, with the idea of kind of NFTs in mind. So that's kind of um, brings us up to date um, through the two tracks of uh, getting involved uh, with deep technologies and with art. Um, and then, uh, so it won't surprise you that um, 
I got um, uh, I got very excited really about the potential for um, blockchain and NFTs really to do transformational work, and I uh, I can see that there's some uh, uh, intrinsic value in um, for digital artists in creating NFTs. So for once, the uh, digital artist can probably start to sell their work as unique uh, pieces of art. But I think there's so much more that can happen with uh, with a blockchain, um, NFTs, and uh, DAOs, um, and and this this is all about really um, taking basic NFTs, but also adding utility to them. So this can be uh, anything from uh, linking an NFT to um, a rap artist's um, uh, concert, so that you you know can get access to to, to concerts for life or there's so many different business models out there but the business model that I'm particularly interested in because I'd already developed an interest in impact uh, investing um, you can see the health uh, accelerators as being part of that because health is clearly an impact uh, type activity um, so this really um, excited me around the idea that uh, we can uh, democratize impact investing um, through uh, through crypto and through the blockchain um, and through uh, the concept of selling um, selling art um, and that that art creating funds that can then uh, go on into uh, crypto blockchain investing um, and so that's kind of really my my next gig. Um, I'm also looking at uh, running a uh, not surprisingly running a blockchain uh, accelerator. Um, which is something I'm also very interested in. Um, so I, I, I think I, I've kind of uh, galloped through that whole um, sort of scenario rather quickly. Um, I'm just I, I'm here really to answer questions, and um, if if anybody would like to ask anything around either. Uh, deep tech startups, um, art, particularly um, particularly digital art and um, NFTs, um, or impact investing. Um, I'm very happy to uh, to answer questions. That's super cool, Paul. Thanks for uh, thanks for sharing. Um, it's uh, where do you see this space going? What excites you most about about um, people being able to tokenize their their art and their their performances or yeah, their work. I, I, I think there are so many uh, opportunities. You know, I think there are there are opportunities specifically from the the artist perspective. Um, you know, in 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 the, in the sense that they can bring scarcity to their work, and they can well, effectively, they can monetize their work. Digital artists have had difficulty in doing that in the past. Um, so, purely from the artist perspective, there there's the ability to um, to monetize, but also to uh, create add-ons. Um, you, you know, so it, you know, in in let's say music, for example. Um, to get some kind of lifetime loyalty, to be able to uh, add on different revenue streams to their current things, and of course, we, you know, we always think about the, the artists and the um, and the recording artists that are really well off, and we don't necessarily feel particularly sorry for them. But you know, there are so many people, so many artists that struggle um, in both, um, you know, the, the visual arts and and music. That any you know, any ability to um, to be able to manage on the, for, for them uh, is a great thing for for the arts in general um but then i think you know i think that it's not just the um the, the 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 artists where these business models benefits i think it's the money that's generated by um you know by the business models that can then create further utility and can create further business models and i i think i'm probably more excited in a way about the the whole democratization of uh, of the investment side than i am just the simple uh you know monetization on behalf of artists although both are you know equally valid um, I, I feel that the VC model really has never really particularly worked, and I think angel investing works even less well. Um, you know, and there's and, and there's been many attempts for people to sit in the middle and to try to um, to, to spread you know to, to spread capital into uh, underinvested startups. 
but it's a very it's a very difficult model to make work. And uh, you know, in the past, if you look at venture capital, it's a very very tiny asset class. So the amount of money that kind of trickles down from people's pensions and other uh, investment vehicles into venture capital or even into angels is like minuscule. And and this is has always been, this is always a barrier. Um, particularly to startups that are not in the main hubs, you know, so it's it's not so bad in London or Silicon Valley, um, but you know, outside there, you know, in 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 a third world nations, etc., the money just isn't getting there. That's super interesting. Um, so, so there's a couple of questions here in the chat. Um, Sim asked, "Said so it's a really nice story. Are you looking for NFT projects right now, or like now?" Um, I think I've, I think we probably possibly will be. I mean, I think for, first of all, uh, I, I've got my own um, sort of um, let's call it pure play, pure play uh, NFT project. In other words, it's a project in its own right, and this is the one around um, uh, democratizing the whole sort of uh, funding side of things um but but also i i think not quite yet but at the time when um we start to look at uh, accelerator models um then usually what i do is i put a call out at that point i mean i'm doing this with the three other accelerators that we've got at the moment um and those are not in uh, particularly in blockchain um but yes ultimately i will I'll be putting out to call them Sorry, there was a bit of interference there, but I think uh, everybody probably caught um, the main point there. For sure, it was just somebody else joining that wasn't uh, wasn't uh -huh. start. There's no, um, no no problem at all. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, and uh, and Roman asked where where we can take a look at your works. Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, I, I mean, I'll give a couple of links to give different examples of different things I've been talking about. Um, let's see. I can. See if I can do it on to everybody. Um, so I'm putting in here uh, the Instagram, which is the main one. Uh, most people will know that Instagram is a very good way for artists to um, get their works out and probably the most popular platform. So that's at, sorry, at Paul M. Dowling. If people are interested in seeing what an accelerator looks like, um, we could try this. This is the first one I was running, which is running still um, with the Crick Institute, and that's called kqlabs.com. Um, but yeah, I think if you look at those two references to start with, um, I haven't got my LinkedIn. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm easy to find on LinkedIn. I can't remember my link, actually. I, um, but if anybody can see that, maybe they could post it on there. Um, yeah. And I mean, one thing probably I should say is that um, as well, I mean, it, it, I guess it's come across, but as well as art, I'm very, very interested in helping startups. I mean, I'm really interested in helping startups in general where I can, but I tend to these days focus in much more on um, on deeper technologies, just because that's kind of where I've, I've, I've moved to. Um, but if anybody's working on startups in um, their areas, you know, such as blockchain, um, uh, and machine learning, uh, quantum computing, or those deeper technologies, I'm always interested in um, in receiving, I guess, the, the, the document that we need to see, I think, in terms of um, most tech startups, it's, um, it's the pitch deck. Um, in terms of blockchain, it tends to be more this white, that, that people tend to produce these white papers. I mean, it's, clear, it's clearly a, a similar thing, but in a different format, really, at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, it, always interested in seeing those. Um, and um, I mean, it, I, I, I clearly can't mentor everybody uh, about every one of those different topics. Um, and that's a, a, a little bit why we run accelerator programs, because it spreads the load quite a lot. Um, but, but also, it, it's it's always going to be a little bit of um, I mean there's a very there's a great similarity between the tech st startup world and the art world in the sense that you you, you tend to start with very big numbers of uh, aspiring founders aspiring artists and 
it's all, there's always a process of quite a lot of tough love that in both professions you tend to get, um, you know, where you uh, where you have to kind of hone your skill and build your reputation and things like that. Um, and so, you know, I would say to uh, people, you know, do, do, don't uh, don't get dispirited. I mean, you, you have to start some way. You, you, you will get tough love given to you until you kind of start to hit the point where, you know, people are interested in what you do. Um, but that's that's the name of the game. And it's, uh, you know, it's 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 a it's a it's a bit Darwinian in, in I guess, in both cases that you have to kind of fight for your position. Um, and uh, don't be surprised if you don't, you know, you, you'll, 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 you'll kiss a lot of frogs in terms of investors um, before you get them starting to, um, you know, part with their with their cash. Paul, oh, I have a question. I was wondering if you could give us an example of of one project of kind of where it started and and why it was right for the incubator and what their process was like and kind of where they finished and maybe even where they are today. Yeah, I, um, I mean, it, it stretches the the, the, the the brain a little bit. So I think I'm going to talk slightly in in general terms, but 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 I think hopefully it will give you the right sort of answer. Um, so a, a, a typical example would maybe be a, a university spin out. It doesn't have to be by any means. And in fact, probably they are the minority. So it might be a group of uh, academics working on something um, like a uh, a way for machine learning to uh, identify potential drugs. Uh, this is a very hot area at the moment. Um, by the time they got on the incubator, generally they would have a little bit of traction. I, I, I don't want to overstate this, but they, they would probably team would be very very important um so they would they would definitely have a in this particular case they would have a couple of very very bright phds um and 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 maybe somebody more, slightly more operational and so really you would look at that team and you'd go well look this is a team that has got the skill set to be able to correct to be able to crack that problem of uh artificial intelligence drug discovery which is um you know which is a which is a complex uh, pro uh, challenge for anybody to um, to to, to um, address. On the other hand, you'd also see that you know if they could crack it, it would be a very big market opportunity, um, and you know this would be become a very valuable startup that would be worth billions, you know, within a, uh, a year or so. So yeah, I mean the one I'm thinking about when I'm talking here, um, the, the, you know, they would have gone through the accelerator, they would have hit, um, they would have met some investors at the end of the accelerator program because. That's how accelerators work, and this is why people tend to join accelerators. Um, and um, and they would, uh, within probably six months of leaving the accelerator, um, they in the case I'm thinking they, they got about two point eight million. Now two point eight million is is enough to for them to hit the next um, inflection point. Um, so the way it works in tech startups is that they they, they define inflection points which you're going to hit because you don't hit the uh, you don't even hit revenues uh, within the, the kind of time scale that you can really think within. Um, but you can hit uh, uh, an inflection point that might be that you get major interest from a big pharma company or something like that, or you prove that you can actually uh, take one uh, particular type of pharmaceutical to uh, to clinical trials. Thank you so much. Uh, it, it, that's super interesting, Paul. I'm sorry for, sorry, Zach. I just wanted to jump in. It. Um, I think you're going to be really interested in what we're doing at Unit. I don't know if you know anything about it, but it's, uh, you know, I don't want to put on my sales hat or anything, but I think you'll you'll find it uh, really good for, for you know, any any project that wants to start with it, whether it's an artist or uh, you know any kind of tech tech company something it, it makes it really really easy to uh, to raise capital and have it in a, a treasury that's backed in a transparent way you can see what's there backed by uh, crypto you know Bitcoin or Ethereum etc um, kind of building the the token economy around around um, you know uh, the the interest that you have I think you you know once you learn a little, learn a little, learn a little bit more about it you'll be using it that's my that's my prediction. Yeah. 
Um, um, yeah, so I'm thinking, um, I'm, you know, I'm a, bit, a bit of sort of on the fly lateral thinking going on here. But um, I, uh, one of my one of our plans is that we might run a um, an incubator in in Portugal because of the um, particular um, you know tax regime, etc. Um, and of course, we we don't want to we won't want to be reinventing the wheel. So I think we'll be looking for a kind of backbone. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't know if it, it, it would you describe would, would you describe what you've just been talking about as a DAO is it um is it has it got smart contracts built in or is it more the um or is it more the, the mechanism for building uh, smart contracts it's a essentially like if you created a token Paul token or, or any, any business that you wanted to, to name um you could when you raise capital essentially it's like you just you create a Paul token let's just say it's a personal token and you have a salary or you have an income from something now uh you can put it into this two smart contracts, I guess it's a smart contract, but it's it's a uh, repository. There's a bank and a treasury that comes with each token. So Paul token, you have 100,000 of them. Um, you're raising the capital, goes into the bank. That's your working capital now. You can access it as the operator. Um, you can also move it to the treasury. And now you, you as the operator don't access it. It's the token holders that access it. So it's like a dividend repository. Um, yeah. Basically, like that's how you pay the, pay the token holders. So it's a... Um, and it's decentralized and and, um, and transparent what's in the bank, what's in the treasury, who owns the most of it, et cetera. Uh, so we use Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polkadot, sort of the reserve assets of the digital space, like digital gold, to actually backing tokens that are new, new tokens that are created. So there's like a floor price, what's in the treasury is the floor, and then it trades at something above that, kind of like a book value or a price to earnings, you know, a, a trading value on the market. So... Yeah, I mean, just it's running through it super fast there, but uh, it's kind of like a remaking of the global accounting system. So you can have a, um, you know, an earnings like how much has gone to the treasury the last three months, six months, a year. That's kind of like earnings. So you can have a price uh, that's a, yeah. it's a decentralized exchange trading Paul token for USDU, the dollar. Um, that's what all the, the liquidity pools are, USDU and something else. And so you can see what the price is, and you can see what you know what's in the treasury. That's the book value. And the earnings, so price to earnings, price to book, you have all kinds of new global uh, remaking of the of the accounting system without need, you don't need China, you know, Chinese opaque accounting, American accounting, European accounting standards, all these different things. So, I th yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of starting to ramp it now. The, the unit token, we're, we're raising capital in the treasury for that. And then we'll have an art token, which is why we have the art token mm. um, forum here. But we kind of foresee that people will be creating tokens around uh, whatever they're doing. And part of the reason we have, we want to have a lot of networking around this space and art every six months or so, this is the first one, the inaugural one, is that people can tokenize, they can share in each other's success, have each other's tokens, and now have a, a way to actually have value, not just the limited supply, and hopefully the demand pushes it up um, in a Ponzi-ish way. So now it's real earnings, real um, you know, measurement of it that everyone can see. So. Hopefully that kind yeah. of that sounds really interesting, and I think we'll be kind of like trying to define what the stack, you know, of of different uh, technologies we would need to kind of put together um, in both the two projects because one's an NFT DAO and the other one is a you know is, is a is an incubator. Um, so we'll be doing that. So we should talk after this. Um, I mean, just to talk a little bit to the artists here. Um, I, I, I think it's um, it, 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 and as a you know as an artist who actually really hasn't been a digital artist, um, all of this can be pretty scary, right? And also, it, it, it can also um, often appear to be contrary to um, you know to what they're trying to achieve as artists. But I, I I just really kind of I'm a bit of a convert on this on all of this. You know, having been a real purist around, um, around, um, I would say, uh, normal traditional art, um, I, I firmly believe that you know you, you you can't really push back progress. You know, art has always art has always been a reflection of um, you know of the of the of the current time, whenever whichever time you've ever been in. Um, and I think that uh, you know, to I think to, to art, the way art's going to develop over the next period is going to be, you know, both um, classical art, but also um, you know how you stretch um, the visual arts in different ways, um, how you link to um, NFTs and to the added utility um, that you can bring, um, and that will become part of the 
art. You know, the art will be more than just the pic, the more, more than just the image that you that you see. Um, and so I think it's uh, and it's important for artists. You know, the, uh, it, 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 the whole point of being an artist is to be able to embrace the change and the and the future and everything else. Um, so I think it's really important for artists to 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 keep um, uh, abreast of these sorts of changes. And um, you know, and I think I, I hopefully I'm a good example of somebody who's not particularly young and is able to uh, manage the uh, the change and you know to to follow uh, what's happening in what is a very uh, complex and abstract I think it's a very abstract um, um, area. Yep, super cool. If anybody wants to uh, unmute um, and ask a question, I think we we started a little bit early, so we're going over a half hour, but we have eight minutes left until the next speaker, Roman. So yeah, yeah happy to answer any questions about. Um, about any of those areas that I've covered. Interesting to know, you know, who's who's from the art side and who's from the technical side. I don't know if there's an easy way for us to find out. You could probably put it in the chat. And put, probably just put art or tech or something like that. Or maybe some somewhere in between. <laughs> uh, yes, so Zachary's art, both. I don't know if you guys who are involved in both find that people find it quite unusual. I, I generally find that um, people are quite surprised by the art side, um, you know, the ones that have known me for years in in tech. Um, but I think there's quite a lot of commonality in the way you, you think, particularly when you're looking at the, you know, the very rapidly changing uh, areas of tech that are becoming quite abstract. I mean, if you look at um, Quantum computing, for example, it's completely abstract. <laughs> yep, Ruba's doing um, art, but using three D printing. That's um, sounds exciting. Yes. Oh, uh, oh Ruba, go ahead, go ahead, Ruba. Um, so I've been working on my uh, startup for a year now, and I'm combining. Uh, 3D printing with um, art. So we're just uh, redefining how sculptures are made, how different um, uh, models are created and so on. Uh, but it's all individual customized unique pieces that we, we install in uh, hotels, uh, luxury offices. Uh, so we're just re redefining how uh, some art pieces and sculptures are made. Uh, even even not necessarily with the uh, traditional sculptures, but also we add the tech, I mean, robotic part into into our sculptures as well. That that sounds really exciting, and and I think Ruby, you can probably also um, create NFTs of the working drawings and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think it it may not immediately have value, but I think over time, it, to 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 take those drawings and to make them into the original the originals with the scarcity, it's, it's worth looking at that because it it's not difficult mm -hmm. to do anyway. It doesn't cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, I think you sparked up the idea there of um, things like generative art, you know, where you're combining AI and art um, and you're getting um, changing images and um, images that combine and become extra scarce. So they're almost kind of like two, two images um, creating yeah. a baby and the baby's, you know, the baby's got scarcity as well. Um, there's, there's so, I mean, there's just so many uh, business models yeah. and so many exciting opportunities, right, both from the physical side that you describe with sculpture, but also, you know, all the, all the stuff that can be done with images. And it, it's, a, it's a very, it's really exciting times, I guess. Yes, yes, it is. That's why I joined. I just wanted to understand more the NFT part as well and how I can transform this as well. So thank you so much for today. It was really, really insightful. Great. It's a pleasure. Scott, Lubica. Yeah. Uh, just one more question, Paul. Um, is there like a one-stop uh, resource, maybe a website or a book that we can, you know, look at more, read, read more, you know, uh, to get more educated uh, about this or? 
that you recommend? <laughs> I, I, to be honest, I've been doing the unit master's course, so I think this is where to go. I, I, apart from oh, okay. that, actually, I've just been using um, a lot of um, Googled resources. Um, I, I'm sure there is a book. And in fact, I asked the same question of somebody the other day and haven't had a response yet. But um, I, to be honest, I think it, it's probably better just to Google, Google a load of stuff on NFTs, maybe have a look at DA, DAOs as well, just to be just for completeness. Um, it's mainly NFT stuff, but DAOs can be interested in, in interesting in terms of defining some additional business models around that. Um, and okay. probably something more general on blockchain. But I think the, the unit uh, course, uh, the, which is free um, and accessible, uh, and doing a bit of an advert for you here, Joe, um, is really good. And, uh, I, I, and I've been doing it and it's very accessible. So, um, and I think you can probably get do a rerun. So if you, if you don't join on day one, I think there are probably ways either of catching up or, um, or just waiting for the next, um, the next series. Amazing. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Actually, I think we're still uh, registering until Friday. That's my understanding anyway. Ah, uh, see? Yeah. Oh, amazing. I'll register immediately. I'll, I'll put okay. that here, unitmasters.org. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's really, it's really cool. And they have sessions every, I think it's Tuesday. There's one today, definitely. Tuesdays and Thursdays. And it's for about an hour. Um, different speakers. And I've been enjoying it um, a lot. Cool, that's awesome. Thanks for that too, Paul. Um, My pleasure. And I guess uh, we have time for one more question. A um, couple of minutes left. Otherwise, um, we don't want to jump in. Again, do do join on the Instagram if you can, and if you want to see uh, if you want to see my progression really from um, from uh, canvas uh, to digital, you'll you'll see some of it happening there and. Uh, uh, and what I do next, really, um, I'll be publicizing that uh, quite widely. Yeah, let's add those here again. Yeah. There's Paul's Instagram and website now. The website, uh, yeah, yeah, is more an example of a... Actually, I will put one more in quickly. Um, I'll put in my actual, because the other one is really an example of an accelerator, but this is my business. It's mindstreamai.com. Not very business-like of me not to actually name, mention the name of the company, but uh, have, have a look at that. And that's the more general um, uh, website for the deep tech uh, consulting, deep tech um, projects and stuff like that. Awesome. Well, thanks, Paul. Uh, very insightful and very, very helpful. And, uh, you know, really appreciate you being here. Thanks.